Hey guys, this is Gary. The USA was the largest sports car market dominated by British roadsters for 20 years since World War II. The USA also had its muscle cars. How could a Japanese car manufacturer in an emerging country compete with the best from Europe and America? This video will be about the history of the Nissan Z. Nissan started out as a small car manufacturer in 1933, building passenger cars and later trucks in limited numbers to Japan. You have to understand the culture of Japan in this era was totally different than it was today. They were very conservative in their mindset and made decisions based on not being flamboyant. The upper middle class and wealthy would have the privilege of owning a car because of their status. Lower classes would be questioned and disdained. Most of the population still used public transportation since it was expensive to own an automobile. Moving up in social class would involve networking rather than being educated or having ambition. In short, you had to know people in high places to get to where you wanted to be. The end of World War II would find the Japanese business structure change as US allies went in and restructured the country removing high status leaders with their cultural ideologies and starting the westernization of Japan. Nissan made several attempts to create a successful open top sports car to get into the US market. It wasn't until the 1965 Fair Lady or Dawson 1600 that they became successful. They did not build sports cars for the home country of Japan as the country was deemed not ready since it was at the time still industrializing. 1965 would also find the U.S. Senate discussing convertible safety regulations that made them more challenging to meet, especially the rollover test. This set the stage for the future U.S. sports car market. Nissan had partnered with Yamaha during the 1960s on designing the next generation sports car. Former Nissan contracted designer Albrecht Goertz was part of the project and it culminated with the A550X. It eventually ended with Nissan scrapping the project in 1964 due to the 2 liter Yamaha engine not meeting Nissan's expectations and high costs associated. Around the same time, Gord's contract also ended with Nissan. Yamaha used this project as a prime engineering example of their work and eventually went to Toyota. Hence, the Toyota 2000 GT resulted. Nissan was known to be conservative but they did have a radical in their system wanting to create cars with excitement and his name was Yutaka Katayama. He had spent a few months in the US Pacific Northwest working as a ship's clerk prior to attending Keio University in Tokyo. Katayama was a car enthusiast and founded the first sports car club in Japan after the war. While working at Nissan as advertising manager in 1958, he persuaded Nissan management to allow him to enter two factory teams in the Australian Mobile Gas Trial Rally, in which there was a lot of opposition. One of the two cars did win their class, with the other placing fourth, providing some international publicity for Nissan. Katayama would return two years later to find his advertising manager position filled in. By now, he had created several enemies opposing the labor union and challenging Nissan management which caused him to be relocated to the US in 1960. It was more of a way to maybe fire him since it was a new market and they weren't as successful, but it actually caused him to learn and understand US car culture and implement it to Nissan's lineup. He would go on to build Nissan's Dawson dealer network in the US and later was promoted to be the first president of Nissan Motor Corporation USA by 1965. Katayama enjoyed the lifestyle in America, from barbecues to Mexican food. He had built great relationships in the US, but with his name being hard to pronounce, he was referred to as Mr. K. He promoted the Dawson cars with his minuscule advertising budget that was given by Nissan Japan through racing competitions and creativity. With impending convertible safety regulations of the mid to late 1960s, Mr. K made a trip to Nissan headquarters in Japan to discuss the 510 and also address his concerns of a new sports car to meet the upcoming US safety regulations. This wasn't going to be an easy task as he had butt heads earlier with Nissan Japan before causing himself to be in a sense exiled to the US in 1960. During his visit to Japan, he met with Nissan head of design and insisted that they develop a new affordable enclosed coupe sports car to meet the evolving US market. Mr. K was then directed to the Nissan office in Shatei, 
who were working on a side project which might be of interest. He met Nissan designer Yoshiko Matsuo, whose primary job was to work on the design of the next Roadster, but as a personal side project, he was working on a coupe prototype with proportions based on Japanese market car regulations. Nissan Japan wasn't particular to it, but allowed it to happen as a future option. Mr. K loved the design, but it would need some modifications to appease to US consumers. Now he just had to convince Nissan Japan executive management. During this time, Kechi Matsumura recently joined Nissan from Japan's Ministry of International Trade and Industry, where his past experience was automotive. After discussions, Matsumura would help Mr. K with the process to push for a new sports coupe and in exchange, Mr. K accepted full responsibility for its success and also a commitment to sell 3,000 units a month, even though there was a lot of resistance from Nissan Japan. Project Z was then born. Nissan had also acquired the more upscale Prince Motor Company during this time, which they planned to implement Prince's engineering and racing experience into the new Z. During Mr. K's trip to Japan, he was also able to get the larger and more powerful 1600cc engine for the 1968 Dawson 510 approved for the USA. Things seemed to be going his way despite knowing that Nissan Japan was very upset, but he felt in himself that it was necessary in order to be successful in the USA. The arrival of the 510 with larger engine was not only a success, it also provided support for his dream sports car to become a reality. Dawson soon became the third largest importer in the USA by 1971. The European and American car manufacturers were now starting to take notice. The 240Z project went through several clay iterations and aerodynamic testing. The project was headed by 10 people at Nissan. Matsuo designed the Z from the start to be a race car but it would also need to meet Mr. K's US requirements. They both in a sense had a similar philosophy with cars which made the relationship even better. The collaboration eventually created the first generation Nissan Fair Lady Z in 1970, starting the legacy of the Nissan Z. The body proportions were larger compared to the prototype to accommodate the larger US consumer, which made it more expensive in Japan due to their size regulations. This was in effect unbothering to Mr. K since his concern was the US market. He was also able to convince Nissan to name the new sports car the Dawson 240Z for the USA. The 240 in the model name references to the 2.4 liters of displacement while the Z references to the Nissan internal code name of Project Z. Let's talk about the name Fair Lady for a bit. The name Fair Lady was given to the new sports car line by Mr. Katsui Kawamata president of Nissan Motors Japan after he had attended a Broadway musical called My Fair Lady visiting the US in 1958. He felt that the name would invoke an image of beauty for the car because people would think of the beauty of the music and the leading lady. Of course, this was a misinterpretation of US culture and never happened for us, leaving it for its home country of Japan. The first batch of cars received would find themselves held during shipment to put the 240Z badges in place of the Fair Lady ones prior to shipping out to dealerships. The 240Z was the first sports car with optional built-in air conditioning. It received a larger 2.4 liter inline six engine for the US market with a masculine bulge on the hood. The Japanese equivalents received a smaller two liter inline six and another two liter inline six with more performance which was also found in the Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR. The first generation received two revisions. The first in 1974, which renamed the model to 260Z due to the 2.6 liter inline six engine. Power was reduced to 140 horsepower to meet emissions requirements. It was only produced for one year in the US with other countries receiving it until the generation ended. It was also offered as a two plus two body style, which made it longer. The final revision in 1975 also renamed the model to 280Z for its 2.8 liter engine displacement and received fuel injection increasing horsepower to 170 horsepower. It was only available for the USA while the rest of the world received the 260Z until the next generation. 
The first generation Z was a hit in the USA. It offered adequate power, sporty suspension, modern features, reliability, and affordability, making it the budget performance car of its time beating out its European competition. The Mustang and Camaro were priced lower, but were more of muscle cars than sports cars, which didn't compete directly with the 240Z. The oil crisis of the 1970s only helped increase sales as less fuel-efficient cars became less desirable. Mr. K was promoted to chairman of Nissan Motor Corporation USA in 1975 and Hiroshi Majima took over as president. Mr. K's success wasn't really acknowledged by Nissan Japan due to his radicalism and this was likely a strategy by Nissan Japan to remove his day-to-day -day directing of Nissan Motor Corporation USA. Mr. K was eventually summoned back to Japan and forced to retire in 1977 right before the second generation 280ZX was released. Hiroshi Majima didn't speak much English and Japanese employees soon started arriving. The culture was changing at Nissan USA. Mr. K continued working for a Nissan subsidiary back in Japan. As far as racing goes, the first generation Zs were very successful in multiple types of racing, especially SCCA or IMSA, Rally and Baja races. The second generation Z was introduced in late 1978 as the 280ZX and was totally redesigned. Nissan had now included an X behind the Z signifying that it had more luxurious options from the factory. It became larger and more of a grand tour offering T-tops, 2 plus 2 and comfort. Performance minded enthusiasts were upset that it lost its performance edge. While the car did use the same 2.8 liter with 5 speed manual from the previous generation, the most notable change was the addition of the turbocharged motor in 1981 offering more power. Japanese versions would be offered with smaller displacement motors to make them more affordable. They never got the larger 2.8 turbo because Japan's Ministry of Transportation limited turbos to 2 liters or less. It was the most successful Z to date, selling over 86,000 units the first year and being recognized as Motor Trend's import car of the year. The 280ZX Turbo was the fastest Japanese import car in the US. There was also a 10th anniversary made during this generation. The 280ZX was also successful in racing in the USA where it won championships in many categories. There were 1001 280ZX R cars homologated by Dawson with a whale tail spoiler to create downforce which was used for IMSA and SCCA racing. The third generation Z was introduced in 1983 as the 300ZX. It was totally redesigned with a wedge shape with more luxury and comfort. The chassis code now is represented by a Z instead of an S like previous generations. Enthusiasts commented that it's become much more of a grand tourer than a sports car. This generation would also be the transition phase from the Dawson badge to the Nissan badge. 1984 models had Dawson and Nissan badges, while 1985 and later were solely badged Nissan onwards, even though dealerships were still under the Dawson brand momentarily. This might have been seen as more of a sucker punch to Mr. K after he had established Dawson in the USA. The car included a new powerful T3 turbo single overhead cam V6 engine for the US. Other versions would be offered with a multitude of engine options depending on the market. It was at the time the most powerful Japanese sports car. There were three revisions for this model. The first in 1986 which was mostly cosmetic with the removal of the hood scoop. The second in 1987 with another aesthetic change that included a more durable transmission, larger brakes and clutch type LSD for turbo models. The last revision was in 1988 which received a smaller T25 turbo and slightly higher compression to help with response. Other minor changes were made to the 300ZX including a water-cooled turbocharger and smoked taillights. It became the second best-selling car with 70,000 units and a special 50th anniversary was offered in 1984. Actor Paul Newman used the 300ZX to race in the 1985 GT1 Challenge and won. This was Newman's fourth national championship. The 300ZX also dominated IMSA GT in 1988, making upwards of 1,000 horsepower and revving to 9,000 RPM with a single turbo. The fourth generation Z was introduced in 1990 as the 300ZX. This would be the most advanced Z of its time. The design was sleek 
elegant and masculine and was offered in a two-seater and two plus two configuration, which were mostly T-tops with a few hardtop and convertible body styles. It came with a 3-liter dual overhead cam naturally aspirated V6 engine and what excited buyers the most, a 3-liter dual overhead cam twin turbo and intercooled V6. It was the first of the Japanese supercars to be limited by the Japan-only gentleman's agreement of a maximum of 280 horsepower. It was praised by magazines and won many awards. US Z car sales reached 1 million during the 1990 model year, making it at the time the best-selling sports car. There would be no happy ending for this generation Z in the US, as the 300ZX suffered the same fate as every other Japanese sports car this era due to the Japanese asset price bubble collapse, causing 300ZX prices to rise. On top of that, the US was moving more towards minivans and SUVs, which didn't help the cause. The USA would see the final 300ZX in 1996, whereas the rest of the world continued to receive it until 2000 where aesthetic changes and minor changes were implemented. This generation would go on to be listed in Car and Driver's 10 best list for the 7 years that it was offered in the US. It also dominated the IMSA, GTO and GTS categories from 1990 to 1995 with driver Steve Millen. A victory in the 24 hours of Daytona was the most notable among a variety of other honorable class championships. Since the Z32 300ZX's last stint in the US was in 1996, that year also caused Nissan to create the Nissan Vintage Z program. Their goal was to collect 200 used 1970-1971 to Dawson 240Zs and restore them to their former glory. Being that Nissan USA had no sports car, this was a tactic they used to stir up interest. Four California shops were given the contract for this project with 10 designated Z-Store dealerships. There were more than 800 parts replaced with a 200-mile road test and a 12-month, 12,000-mile warranty. The 240Z's expected price was to be around $22,000, but eventually increased to $27,500, which was no longer a performance deal. The first factory refurbished 240Z was unveiled on May 3, 1996 at US headquarters in Gardena, California. It wasn't a profitable venture as Nissan found out, so after 40 cars were built, Nissan terminated the project. Mr. K was inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame in 1998. He also created a Z concept sketch, which was a modernization of the 240Z. Yoshiko Matsuo, the original 240Z designer, was not pleased. The 240Z concept then followed in 1999. Nissan terminated the project because it would use a four-cylinder engine in which the Z always had a six-cylinder. The retro look was also too tacky. Nissan would eventually find itself with a financial debt of $20 billion and near bankruptcy in 1999. French company Renault purchased 37% of Nissan in March of 1999, forming the Renault-Nissan Alliance. Chief Operating Officer Carlos Ghosn created the Nissan Revival Plan in 2000 and went into Nissan to clean house. He promised that if he didn't meet yearly fiscal goals, that he would fire himself. He started with reducing 15% of the workforce, ending lifetime employment, closure of five Japanese plants, reduction of suppliers, shareholdings, and auctioning of Nissan's aerospace unit. Not only that, he restructured Nissan, removing seniority-based promotion to being goal-driven. The English language was standardized at Nissan with the inclusion of executives from Europe and North America in key global meetings for the first time. These moves created profitability within the first 12 months and within 3 years Nissan became the industry's most profitable automaker with more than twice the industry average margin. The Nissan Revival Plan goals were reached before the end of March 2002, eliminating Nissan's debt which means success for Carlos Ghosn. Even before becoming CEO in 2001, Carlos set out to revamp Nissan's lineup with new models such as the Altima, Maxima, and Z. The Z would be reintroduced as a halo car to help sell the brand. The negative reaction to the previous 240Z concept would lead Nissan to create a new Z concept design and was debuted at the North American International Auto Show. It would have a target price of $30,000 while benchmarking the Porsche Boxster. The fifth generation Z was introduced in the summer of 2002 as the 350Z with a base price of $26,000 and offered as a two-seater hardtop and as a convertible in 2004. 
there were cues of the first generation 240Z implemented into the 350Z. The X after the Z was also removed to pay tribute to the original Z model name. Several trims were offered from base to Nismo, as well as a special 35th anniversary edition in 2005. It had a new 3.5 liter VQ35DE dual overhead cam V6 making 287 horsepower and received a power increase in 2005 to 300 horsepower from the VQ35DE rev up engine. And it also had the new 3.5 liter VQ35HR with dual intakes that produced more power at 306 horsepower. The 2007 to 2008 350Z was more desirable since it had most earlier issues solved. 2008 saw MOLA win Drivers and Team Championship in the GT300 class. Hasimi also won the GT300 class title again in 2010. The 6th generation Z was introduced in 2009 as the 370Z. It was slightly shorter, wider, and lighter than the 350Z, which included a Nismo trim and then a convertible body style in late summer. It received a new 3.7 liter VQ37 VHR dual overhead cam V6 engine producing 333 to 355 horsepower depending on the market and the trim. It came with a 6-speed manual or 7-speed automatic with paddle shifters. A unique feature to the manual transmission is referred to as synchro rev match, which rev matches during downshifts. The 6th generation Z also received revisions in 2013 and a Nismo only revision for 2015. Yutaka Katayama passed away in 2015. He is known to Nissan Z enthusiasts as Mr. K, father of the Z car. With Nissan running out of ideas, this generation has been out for about a decade now with no drastic changes. There have been rumors of a 7th generation Z which may be using the twin turbo V6 currently in the Infiniti Q50 or Q60. It's most likely because these two cars have shared the same engine since the early 2000s. The Nissan Z has lost its initial goal parameters, which was to be a lightweight sports car, moderately powerful and affordable. Being that Mr. K was a pioneer for Nissan, will we see Mr. K's vision return in the next generation Z? I hope you enjoyed the history of the Nissan Z. It created a revolution in the US sports car market and established Japan as a viable contender in the sports car arena. It may be the reason why we don't see other cars of its type anymore. Like and share if you found this video informational. Also, browse my channel for more videos and subscribe for future content. I'll see you in the next one.